Yes, go on. <laughs> The Technical Training Department of Yaskawa America Incorporated presents Setting Up the IQ Pump Intelligent Pump Controller. I'm Steve Kaler. The IQ Pump was designed to be easy to set up and operate, but at the same time, it was created to control the widest possible variety of pumping system applications, from commercial and residential irrigation to sewage lift and booster pump stations. Easy and versatile. By learning the process of setting up and running the IQ pump in advance, you'll be rewarded by the best of both, all the valuable capabilities and all the ease of everyday use. Most users choose to control the IQ pump from the keypad. However, it is also possible to start and stop the pump from an external device, like a switch for example. And that's why the terminal start option is built into IQ pump. Begin setting up the terminal option by wiring in the switch. Use terminals S1 and SN. As you do, make sure there is a jumper between SP and SC. Once the wiring is complete, set the terminal option parameter by going into the programming menu. From the main menu, press the up arrow until you reach the programming menu, the one with the image of the pencil. Enter the programming menu, then scroll to parameter B102 select by pressing enter, then change parameter B102 to 1 for digital input. Press enter one last time to finalize the change. Now you're done setting this parameter, so press the F1 button to return to the home screen. The screen should be flashing the letters RSEQ for remote sequencing. Test the function you've just set by closing the remote switch. The system should operate when you do so, and turn off again when the switch is opened. If your system has two operation conditions, like a daytime pump setting and a nighttime setting, for example, IQ Pump gives you the option of creating two set points. Imagine you had a two position switch, a day night switch, or a high and low setting. We've already created one of our set points in the quick setup menu. If we want to find it, we go to the programming menu and go to the parameter Q101. It is currently set at 60 PSI. There's also a Q102. We can see that it's currently set to 0. For the purpose of our demonstration, let's set that to 80 PSI. We'll also need to program one of the digital inputs for the switch to connect to, and this is done using the H1 parameters in the programming menu. From the factory, the IQ pump has digital input S5 configured as a set point selector switch. Simply wire your two position switch between the S5 and the SN. When the switch is in the open position, the system set point will be Q101. When the switch is in the closed position, then Q102 will be the set point. You may have noticed that when you started up the system, the display included the words thrust mode active. Let's talk about what thrust mode means and then discuss how to control it. A submersible motor usually uses a thrust bearing in its design. To function effectively, a thrust bearing must ride on a layer of fluid. If the pump doesn't come up to speed quickly, this layer of fluid won't be built up in time and the motor bearing could fail. This type of failure isn't covered by the motor's warranty. For this reason, the IQ pump comes from the factory with settings that will bring a motor up to 30 hertz in one second which is an appropriate setting for most submersible motors. If you don't have a submersible motor, there's no need to bring your system up to speed so quickly. However, most standard horizontal pumps will not be harmed by such a fast acceleration up to 30 Hz. Vertical turbine pumps definitely shouldn't be operated in thrust mode. The IQ pump has a preset macro that should be used for vertical turbine pumps. The macro will automatically disable the thrust function. But we are not talking about vertical turbine pumps. We are talking about a constant pressure, submersible application, so we want thrust enabled. Since we're in the programming menu, let's look at some of the other pump protection features that the programming menu provides. The low and high feedback settings are important protection for your system in the event of damage or disaster.
Set the low feedback value by going to P108 in the programming menu. Parameter P109 allows you to define how many seconds the system will wait before it reacts to a low feedback state. P110 lets you choose the way IQ Pump will respond to the low feedback condition. You can choose Fault, which simply shuts the system down. Your other options are to create an alarm message or to close one of the IQ Pump's digital outputs. A similar set of parameters applies to high feedback. Go to parameter P111 to set the high feedback value. Parameter P112 to set the amount of time between the beginning of a high feedback state and a system response. And P113 allows you to specify a shutdown, alarm, or output in response to a high feedback event. The IQ pump can be configured to automatically reset pump faults and restart by using the L5 parameters. L501 allows you to set the number of times the system will attempt to restart. The factory default for drive auto restarts is 5, but it can be set as high as 10 or as low as 0. L504 sets the amount of time that elapses between a shutdown and an auto restart. As an extra level of control, we can select which pump faults will generate an auto restart individually. For example, L540 specifically allows us to choose to restart after the system shuts down due to a low feedback fault. IQ Pump was designed to protect you in a number of ways if a pump is running dry, a situation otherwise known as loss of prime. IQ Pump detects loss of prime by comparing the current, power, and torque the motor is producing with the speed at which it's running. When the current, power, and torque, or speed, fall out of their normal range, IQ Pump defines it as a loss of prime. In other words, a dry run. You can adjust the definition of loss of prime by using a set of P1 parameters in the programming menu. Parameter P118 sets the criteria that IQ Pump will use for determining loss of prime. Choose motor current, power, or torque. Both P119 and P120 fine-tune the definition. P119 allows you to set the level of low current, power, or torque that triggers a loss of prime event. P120 lets you set how many seconds the loss of prime must last before it triggers a fault. Setting P121 sets the speed your motor must exceed before IQ Pump recognizes the change as loss of prime. The factory default for P121 is set at zero, which means the motor must be operating within one hertz of its maximum speed. Parameter P122 lets you choose your preferred response to a loss of prime event. The fault option shuts down the system. You can also call for an alarm or choose to trigger a remote output. Finally, P123 allows you to specify an auto restart for a loss of prime fault. Now this parameter is different from L504, which sets the auto reset function for other pump faults. A much wider range of time options are available with the P123 than with L504. We're talking days instead of minutes. The choice was built in because IQ Pump is commonly used in well applications, and it can sometimes take days for a dry well to recharge itself. In order to understand the not maintaining set point function, we need to look at the reasons a pumping system might have trouble maintaining the rate of pressure we set. If there's a leak in our system, or the possibility of a broken pipe in the main line, the pump might be unable to maintain its set point. Opening a valve could also change the system's ability to build pressure. In either case, we don't want the system to continually labor trying to reach a set point it can't possibly maintain. And that's the reason for parameters P115, P116, and P117. P115 defines what not maintaining means. In other words, it sets how far the actual pressure has to stray from the set point to be considered not maintaining. P116 expresses the not maintaining state in terms of time. How long does the system have to be in a not maintaining state before the drive will react? How the drive will react to not maintaining state is determined by how parameter P117 is set. As with our previous protective functions, the choices are do you want to fault and stop, or simply alarm but keep running, 
or would you merely like to close one of the drive's digital outputs? IQ Pump offers a sleep boost feature that allows systems with a pressure tank to achieve less system stress and greater energy savings. Pressure tanks are commonly used as a buffer, minimizing the need for a pump to go on and off every time there is a small change in pressure. By pressurizing the tank to a slightly higher pressure during the times of low demand, we can store some excess pressure to meet a small demand without needing to run the pump. It decreases stress on the motor while also saving energy. Set the sleep boost feature by accessing parameter P205 from the programming menu and entering an amount. A common setting is 5 PSI. In some cases, the system might be unable to reach the boosted set point. That's why IQ Pump includes an adjustable timeout timer that suspends the sleep boost feature. Without it, the system might run all night to achieve 5 extra PSI and would be a waste of any energy gains that the sleep boost feature might create. By now, we've set a number of parameters. Wouldn't it be handy if we could call up one menu to display all the changes we've made? That's what the modified constants menu is all about. Check it out by pressing F1 or Home and then using the up or down keys until the modified constants menu comes up. In one convenient menu, the IQ Pump's LCD displays everything that we've changed from its original factory setting. If you have been called into the field to adjust an IQ pump you aren't familiar with, the modified constants menu is very valuable. It gives you a comprehensive view of every setting that has been changed from the factory default. And since we're talking about modifications, now would be a good time to show you how to wire in a low water float switch. This type of switch is commonly used in a water tank. If the water level in the tank drops down, the float also goes down and triggers the float switch. The input for a float switch can be wired into one of the digital inputs of the IQ Pump's terminal block from S1 to S8. Enter the programming menu and choose the H1 parameter that corresponds to the contact you wired to. Set the parameter to 8F, the setting for low water level. Now, some float switches are normally open, some normally closed. A parameter allows you to set for both switch types. When the low water level is triggered, the pump will fault and stop. There are just a few additional points of reference we need to go over to make sure you're fully informed. As time goes on, you may develop the need to use the hard current limit feature. This feature exists because motors tend to draw more current as the pump gets older, loses some of its efficiency, and the impeller starts to wear. This means the pump may draw more power at full speed as the system tries to maintain its set point pressure than the rated full load current on the motor nameplate. Access parameter Q301 in the programming menu to enable the hard current limit function, and then using Q302, set in the maximum motor amps the motor is not to exceed. When the motor starts drawing current above Q302 setting, the IQ pump will automatically slow down the pump by reducing the output speed. This is your assurance that the system will not exceed the current limit that you set. The system keeps running while also compensating for pump wear. Even the most knowledgeable, experienced IQ pump user may have a need to call Yaskawa for tech support. If you do, you'll need to know the current software ID parameter. Find it by hitting the F1 button four times on the home screen. You'll see the text CPU number and software number on the LCD screen. You may want to jot them down so the information is handy when your Yaskawa tech support professional asks for it. To return to the home screen again, hold the escape key for a few seconds. This is also a good time to make a record of all the programming changes we have made so far. Now to do this, record the parameters found in the modified constants menu for future reference. Now you've seen the most important steps that go into setting up an IQ Pump Intelligent Pump Controller. If there's anything else you need to know, let us suggest a simple first step a visit to yaskawa.com. It's a rich resource for technical information and product documentation, all searchable and ready to download and put to use. 
We've come to the end of this training program, but it is definitely not the end of our commitment to make Yaskawa drives and motion products the best in the industry. The commitment to quality continues in the way we work with our customers and with our vendors. It's the way we train our associates. It means we deliver product on time, we answer questions quickly, and we never say we can't. Yaskawa quality is reflected in the effort our associates bring to work every day. To us, quality means doing everything we can to make our customers, our partners, and our employees' experience a great one. We commit to that. We make it happen. We can, because to us, it's personal.